Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you for the opportunity to gather here where heaven and earth are joined, here at the altar of your Son, here at the place where we have enjoyed blessed hours, the place that we call your house, the place where you reveal yourself in earthen vessels. And we come to adore you. We come to worship you. We come to look up to you. We come to be instructed. We come to be strengthened. We come to be encouraged. We come, Father, to be brought together because the forces of darkness, the distractions in this world, the circumstances of life seem to pull us down, pull us apart, and we seek that sweet fellowship together with you, your Son, and the Holy Spirit. And today again, we say thank you for the life of Christ, Thank you for your sacrifice, and thank you for your promise to return. And now we ask for a blessed connection to those who cover us in prayer. Grant that your spirit may find access to each heart, to the hearts of those who are connected in spirit only, those who are connected on the telephone or on the web, and especially to, Father, for each one, just like for those who are gathered here in person. We thank you for opening the ways for our day so that we can seek this connection, and we ask that this celebration of ascension, Christ's ascension, may be complete. These things we ask in Jesus' name, for the sake of your glory. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this evening we have a word taken out of the um, first book of Peter, the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verse 22. Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Please be seated. To on Ascension Day have a reading. Beth is going to read. Are you going to tell us what you're reading? From Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 19, the Great Commission. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe, in my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Thank you, Beth. Response him solo.
Brothers and sisters, it's good to be together on a Thursday night. I guess for some of us, we used to gather on a Thursday night. You know, it's been a while since, uh, since we could do that. But today is one of those special occasions where we get to commemorate and also celebrate the ascension of Christ. It's fascinating for us to consider that Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, and uh, yeah, Christmas, Good Friday, Easter. You know, there's, there, there's so many Christian holidays, how can we count them? Um, the, the key ones, right, are there. But uh, as one preacher said recently, he went looking for an ascension I wanted to say Ascension Day card, right? Because it's like we put Ascension and Day smack together. Was looking for an Ascension card and just couldn't find one anywhere. This past weekend I was together with a couple of ministers in a Baptist church, spent a little bit of time in fellowship, and I said, so, is the church open for Ascension Day? And he was like, well, it's open every day. Now that's nice, right? Manhattan churches are open every day. But do you have services? And I, of course, you know what happens then, right? That ego gets stirred up and it's like, well, we have a service. Yeah, never mind. For each one of us, it's an opportunity to really have a look and see, okay, what is it just, what is it that I believe? What is it that I want to celebrate today? What is it that I want to come and be worshipful about, be connected with the dear Lord. And this morning I heard, and and also out of the last year's Ascension Day service, our chief apostle underlined for everyone the fact that the resurrection of Christ and the Ascension are closely connected. They're intimately tied It's interesting for us to let our mind go for a moment and wonder, now what would have happened if Christ wouldn't have ascended, right? He resurrected from the dead, the Holy Spirit gave him life again, and he came to life, all, we can say, all by himself, and yet scripture says, uh, through the Spirit, he was quickened. And then it's kind of fascinating to think, well, you know, why isn't he walking around here 2,000 years later? Wouldn't that, like, really convince people, oh, my goodness, look at that Jesus. He's 2,000 years old, and he hasn't aged a day. And today he's still doing miracles, and he's still demonstrating the power of God. But then we realize, on the other hand, he would have been limited to one place, right? Right? Even though he had the power to come through the doors and to meet the disciples and to show them his side and say, here, look at my hands, he was still limited in his body because he had taken on flesh, right? That miracle of, of, of the virgin birth was so remarkable, we still can't figure out how, and yet we have the opportunity to believe it that God fit into a human being and for 30-some years walked among his contemporaries. But then to consider the, the essence and the importance of ascension, the importance of him leaving this earth and returning to the Father underlines for each one of us his divinity, right? He was here as a human being. He ate, he drank, he slept. He celebrated the wedding of Cana. He journeyed with the twelve, with others who joined him. And yet, the return demonstrates for all of us as believers that Jesus indeed was the Son of God, that the power to leave this earth and to be received up into heaven only is possible, or we could say actually that he as a human being was the first one who was able to do that. 
Now, for the scholars, right, in us, uh, Priest Lavaglio raised the question, but what about Elijah? You know, he walked and then he was taken into heaven. Enoch, right, walked, and then he walked with God and was no more. Moses cared for by God at the end of his life. Buried, we say, but no one's ever found his, his grave. Yes, but those men, those three individuals, they didn't receive the glorified body. Jesus received the glorified body. Right? We understand that today we carry a terrestrial body. It is fraught with the consequences of sin. But our hope is in Christ. Because he came and walked in the same flesh that we have, was tempted with the same temptations that we were, that we are, and that we shall be. But he lived the perfect life. And because of him... And then his promise that he would also return, we have hope. We have hope that we too shall be glorified, that we too shall be completed. And what's required? It was put nicely, Beth, thank you for that reading. It was put nicely in that reading. Let me see if I can dig it out for just a moment. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Hmm. Mark, the quick writer, Mark, the one who wrote Peter's story, says here, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. That's what's required, brothers and sisters. That's what's required to the end, belief. Belief on our walk that Jesus was the Son of God, indeed is the Son of God, that he led a perfect life, that he died for our sins, that he resurrected because the grave couldn't hold him. It's kind of funny, right? We heard the third day, on the third day, and I'm like, well, Three times 24, did it take 72 hours? No, it doesn't seem as though it took 72 hours if we actually dig into the Bible story. And then resurrected, he met Mary, right? Mary mistook him for the gardener. Mary looked at him and thought, oh, maybe you know where Jesus is. Beloved, today, maybe we also wonder, in the circumstances of life, where is our Jesus? Where is our Savior? Then, we're encouraged to have a look at this first epistle of Peter. It was written to the, to the Christians of the dispersion. It was written to those who were scattered and spread out all over the place. And you know, it's fascinating. I heard, not directly, but I heard Apostle Schnabel recently said, Ascension Day is the detonation of the power of God. Now, for those of you who remember the Roadrunner, right, just for a moment to uh, breathe some, some tension, some different tension through our hearts and minds. For those of you who remember the Roadrunner, right, what happened when, was it the coyote that blew up? Or was always blowing things up? Thank you, Priest Schiller. You know, remember, right? What happens to that detonator, right? It gets lifted up and plunged down and kaboom, right? And everything's over. When we think about that for a moment, it's interesting to take that piece of analogy to this day, to the ascension. Because it was through that power of ascension, Christ leaving this world, that actually all of his work was able to be spread around and manifest specifically 10 days from now as we'll celebrate Pentecost, right? The movement of the Spirit, the movement of God, the conviction of 
the Holy Spirit through the apostles, through the believing souls, through the 3,000 who were gathered, right? It, 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 it spread like, oh, better than the virus that we're fighting in this pandemic, right? It just spread like wildfire. And the amazing thing was, brothers and sisters, whether those of the earlier church had an easy time or whether they had a difficult time, and we know some of them had dire circumstances, terrible, horrific suffering, unbelievable force of evil, and yet Christianity spread. Yet the followers of Christ, they couldn't even invite people to a, to a gathering. They, somebody had to recognize in the lives, especially of those who were persecuted, they had to recognize there's something different there. There's a different kind of power active. There's a different set of rules going on. Those Christians, those Christians put themselves at risk to take care of their neighbor. They took the command of Jesus to love God above all and your neighbor as yourself. They took it to heart. And brothers and sisters, isn't that what we strive to do also today? To love God above all, to recognize him in his sovereign place. And Jesus, as our Bible text says, at the right hand of God, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. What would it take to control angels and authorities and powers? Who could do that but the living God, but the Almighty? And when we think about, right, who is... Who is the right hand of God? Jesus. He is at the right hand of God with full power, with full authority. He is the one who intercedes for us. He is the one who mediates for us. He is the one who has sacrificed for us. He is the one who loves us so much that he was willing to die for us, willing to leave and entrust his church with the early disciples and watch it grow, and watch it even in the suffering grow, watch it even in the struggles of faith continue to be carried out. We can say from one standpoint, whether we're many or few, whether we meet a believer or not on the street, whether we encounter faith or not, the dear God, through his Holy Spirit, has kept the church alive for 2,000 years. And we can still, with joy, wait for the return of Christ. How was it? Luke writes in his second book, right, in the book of Acts, that the angels, right, after Jesus ascends, the angels said to those disciples who were with him, what are you doing here, guys? Uh, sorry, I think he said, ye men of Galilee, why gaze ye up into heavens? The same Jesus who has gone up from here will come in like manner, right? That had to be the source of their joy. That had to be the source of their consolation. That had to be the source of their strength and their courage. And then, filled with the Holy Spirit in the days to come. Why? Because they obeyed Christ's command. Abide in Jerusalem. Stay together. Hang out together. Be with each other until you receive the power endowed from heaven that you can proclaim the gospel. Beloved, today we are still called to proclaim the gospel that Christ is the Savior. Christ is sovereign. Christ is the one who's coming back. Christ, yes, we've been encouraged, right, not to rely on the rescue commission that he's going to uh, leash um, to, 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 to engage in, but rather that we look at him as the bridegroom who's coming for his lover, 
who's coming for you and you and you and each one of us. He has such a love that he will not tarry, he will come. Beloved, let us continue. Continue in faith, strengthened, encouraged, celebrating the ascension, looking forward to Pentecost, and praying even that this year, in the Pentecost feast, that we too may receive the means to let the Spirit have more room in our soul, to let the Holy Spirit have more access to our life, to, that we grow more and more in the mind and spirit of Christ. And then it will be a perfect marriage when he returns for his bride. Amen. We have an acceptance in. Beautiful. And now, beloved, as our thoughts turn to the praying of the Lord's Prayer, absolution, and the celebration of Holy Communion, we're taken back to, again, the words of Christ and his promise. We can find them in Matthew, I think it's the 26th chapter here, Well, it was here a minute ago, you know. Ah, yes, here we go. After supper, after the 12, right? Because Judas was still there. And uh, Jesus was there, so the 13. Somebody said once, they came in and asked for a table for 25, but they were only going to sit on one side, right? If we look at the famous painting... I think it's of Da Vinci, of a table for 25. We'll only, we'll only be 13 of us eating. But nevertheless, we come to these famous words of Christ when at the end of supper, he took the last cup. Because in Passover celebration, there's four cups that belong to the Seder. And he said, but I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Again, beloved, that hope, that spark, that light, that desire awakened within us, he is waiting to celebrate with us Holy Communion, with us the breaking of bread, the breaking of his body, the flowing of his blood, for our redemption, still waiting and looking forward to one more celebration of the fruit of the vine in the, in the Father's kingdom. And then it says, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd 
and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. What moves within your heart, brother, sister? All the sheep were going to be scattered. All would stumble. We've all stumbled. And we come with a repentant heart, asking the dear God for forgiveness. Maybe it's something new that caught us, that grabbed our attention, that grabbed our tongue, that grabbed our actions, or even grabbed our thoughts. Maybe it was something new. Maybe it was something old. But the Savior who stretched out his arms on the cross welcomes each one. Come. Come. Here at my table there is forgiveness. Here at my table there is reconciliation. Here at my table there is redemption. Let us enjoy now the hymn of repentance. Amen. Please rise and let us pray the prayer which the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the commission of my sender, the apostle, I proclaim unto you the glad tidings. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, your sins are forgiven. The peace of the risen one abide with you. Amen. Dearest Lord Jesus, we come to say thank you for your sacrifice. We can't imagine what it was like on our worst day for you in the Garden of Gethsemane. We can't imagine what must have raced through your mind, through your heart, through your spirit, when you saw those Roman soldiers coming for you. And when Judas kissed you, (laughs) 
Thank you for enduring the cross. Thank you for the sacrifice that means life eternal for us. Thank you for the forgiveness that is freely offered and that works with every repentant soul. Thank you for promising to come again. And thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to lead us, to encourage us, to adjust us in our thoughts, in our walk, in our speech, in everyday life. We long for your return and we pray, Father, shorten the time and send the Lord Jesus for the sake of your glory, even today. Amen. And now we shall celebrate Holy Communion. The Lord's table is now prepared. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I consecrate bread and wine for Holy Communion and lay there upon the once brought, eternally valid sacrifice of Jesus Christ. For the Lord took bread and wine, gave thanks, and said, This is my body which is broken for you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the remission of sins. Eat and drink. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Body and blood of Jesus given for you. Amen. And can be seated. The Lord now invites you to his table.
we can offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Abba, Father, we come to you to say thank you again for the moments of fellowship, for the moments we could sit under word and sacrament, for the moments that we could set aside our cares, our concerns for the day. Thank you for a celebration of the success of your Son, for his completion of his mission here on earth. And now we want to pick that mission up again in our faith, in our life, in our hearts, in our spirit. We have brought gifts into your house. We have been made investments as the congregation. We have sown seeds of hope, seeds of encouragement, prayers, love, expressions born out of your fatherly heart for your children. And we pray, too, that where invitations have been extended to friend and guest, where a word of knowledge has been provided, where a word of wisdom has been shared, where a heart has been served, where a soul has been drawn closer in intimacy to you. We pray for your blessing on all the offerings and sacrifices that your children have done. Father, your children, not only here in this congregation, but throughout this country and around the globe. And we ask again, that peace may be restored where it is missing, that the right relationships, friend, neighbor, family member, can be stirred up. And Lord, that soon we can see your kingdom growing within each one of us, growing within our community and circle of influence, and also growing around the world. We pray, shorten the time, send the Lord Jesus, and hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We have a closing hymn, Thanksgiving hymn, Glory for Me, song number 411, but we don't have any hymnals, so clue, don't start with verse 1, let's go for verse 2. Announcements?
um, this Sunday, we have service at 10. And next Sunday, we have the Pentecost barbecue following the service, which starts at 9. So come early, go to bed early Saturday night in a week, and see you there.